Mountain News First at Four continues. A major water line break in Prestonsburg disrupted traffic for those in the area today. WYMT's Chas Jenkins is at the scene with more. Crews are hard at work tending to a recent water line break near West Court Street. City leaders say the break happened this morning. Crews responded immediately to the incident, detouring traffic around the area while they fixed the problem. As of earlier Friday afternoon, there was only one street without water, affecting only a few businesses. Presidentsburg Mayor Les Stapleton says he was proud of the diligent response from the city. They have different departments up there at the uh, city utilities. and. All four of the departments that I know of have been out here working. Uh, the vac truck, which uh, usually does cleans lines and stuff like that. That's the, that truck is nothing but a big vacuum cleaner. And they're cleaning around the line so that the water guys can go ahead and fix it. We are told the break began at approximately 10.15 Friday morning. In Prestonsburg, Chaz Jenkins, WYMT Mountain News. Stapleton says traffic will be opened up sometime later today. Chas will have more on the water line break at 6 o'clock, including an interview with someone at one of the businesses affected. Governor Andy Bashir visited Lawrence County High School today to announce more than $9.2 million in grant funding. The funds will go toward a new vocational building, expanding the school's pathways in a state-of-the-art facility. Bashir says the investment in education will not only serve the students, but could help fuel the community, saying it's about more than just a new building, it's about a new future. A brand new career and technical center, giving hands-on training uh, for careers, for skilled trades uh, to the students here in Lawrence County. Several students say though they will not see the building in their time at the school, they believe they helped pave the foundation to make it happen. We will hear from some of them and the governor again coming up tonight at 6. A school system is dealing with the deaths of two high school students in the same week. Remembrance activities were held for Jordan Watson, who died Tuesday in a motorcycle crash. Balloons were released in his memory Thursday, and a ceremony was held for him earlier in the gym. And just a few hours later, 15-year-old Brooklyn Clements was killed when the Razor ATV she and a friend were in crashed on Gum Lick Road. She was a sophomore and active on the softball, soccer, and volleyball teams. We were all able to come together last night as a team. Uh, there were probably about 200 students that met at one of the local churches. Um, spent some time with each other, uh, some parents, students all together. Uh, I think we left around midnight last night. The funeral for Jordan Watson will be held at Casey County High School Sunday. Jordan was a senior who was very involved in junior ROTC. The funeral for Brooklyn Clements has been set for 5 o'clock Tuesday night and also at Casey County High School's gymnasium. In July 2020, 21-year-old Allie Davis of Prestonsburg died in a car crash. Soon after, Wizard of Paws, a pet grooming business owned by one of Allie's friends, was asked by Allie's mother to facilitate a donation drive to benefit the Floyd County Animal Shelter by being the designated drop-off location. Wizard of Paws owner Bailey Copley said that last year's donation drive was a great success and it's wonderful to see her friend's legacy live on. When she passed, um, her mom and all her friends and family wanted to make it, you know, make an effort to make sure that that continued. Um, so there's a bunch of other fundraisers that Betty does in her name, but specifically I do the um, animal shelter because she adopted her dog Morty from there back in 2017. Copley says you can donate blankets, dog or cat food, cleaning supplies, cat litter or anything else you can think the shelter might need. We'll have more from the Allie Davis donation drive coming up at 530. A beautiful day so far today. A little bit on the cooler side, yes, but still not too bad as we have high pressure overhead. Blue skies out there. Well, a few high clouds, but no rainfall to worry about. UVA Wise camera showing some of those high clouds working through this afternoon. Mountain Parkway at Slate, even fewer clouds working through. 
Otherwise, beautiful sunshine. That has kept temperatures yeah, a little on the cooler side. Where those clouds are in place, Pikeville, Prestonsburg, and those low 50s, same thing Jackson Hazard, mid and even a couple upper 50s trying to get going across the Cumberland, the Cumberland Valley as we go through this afternoon. So overall, not too bad of a day outside. Pinpoint Doppler, it's a clean sweep, just like we've been talking about just about all week long at least the back half of the week, but it's going to be another chilly night outside. Low 30s, many of us dropping below freezing as we head through tonight. Calm winds are going to help those temperatures tumble as we head into tonight. Make sure you wear something warm if you're headed out to any of those high school football playoff games tonight. Well, we do have warmer temperatures in the forecast as we head into next week, and I'll have the details on that coming up in just a few short minutes. Steve? All right, Evan, thank you very much. We've got late word that top Democrats have abruptly postponed an expected House vote today on a 10-year, uh, $1.85 trillion social and, ec and environment measure as leaders uh, struggle to balance demands from progressives and moderates once again. Uh, dog that pillar of President Joe Biden's domestic agenda. Now, Democrats were continuing negotiations earlier behind closed doors to wrangle votes from their party as the president made a public call for them to show the world that America's democracy can deliver. House Republicans oppose the costly social spending measure and they've tried to stall the process with procedural votes. Republicans will use every tool in our toolbox to try to save America, to try to stop the reconciliation bill. The price tag for President Biden's social spending plan is nearly $2 trillion. It includes four weeks of paid family and medical leave, a key uh, sticking point for key Senate moderate Joe Manchin. The legislation needs support from all Democrats to pass the evenly divided Senate. And again, we've just learned that the House Democrats have delayed uh, voting on the social bill, but they do plan on voting on the infrastructure bill. Of course, this is a developing story that we'll continue to follow, and there will be much more later on the CBS Evening News. Well, First Lady Jill Biden is planning a campaign to encourage COVID-19 vaccines for children ages 5 to 11. Her office says she's kicking off the effort Monday. Biden's first scheduled stop is a pediatric vaccination clinic at Franklin Elementary School in McLean, Virginia. Franklin was also the first school to administer the polio vaccine in 1954. This vaccination push comes just days after the CDC recommended Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. As more children roll up their sleeves, focus turns to protecting those under five, and some health leaders say it could happen as soon as spring of 2022. Of the three companies with authorized COVID-19 vaccines in the U.S., Pfizer is furthest along in testing shots for children under the age of five. Moderna is studying its vaccine in children younger than 12. Johnson & Johnson has planned trials in those younger ages but has not started yet. Family, friends, and Washington's power players said a final goodbye to the late Colin Powell today. Powell served his country for decades as a soldier, diplomat, and advisor. He died last month of complications from COVID-19 while also battling Parkinson's and multiple myeloma. CBS's Deborah Alfaron takes us inside Washington's National Cathedral. A who's who of Washington came to say goodbye to Colin Powell. In the front row, current and former presidents, along with former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Powell's former deputy, Richard Armitage, spoke about his boss's sense of humor and curiosity. Nothing made Secretary Powell happier than to sneak away from his security detail. He it would generally be followed by a call to me on the cell saying, I'm free, I broke out. Powell broke barriers during his decades in public life as a soldier and diplomat. He was the first black man to hold jobs as national security advisor, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and secretary of state. Beneath that glossy exterior of warrior statesman was one of the gentlest and most decent people any of us will ever meet. Powell was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom twice, and he called his 2003 speech to the UN, laying out his rationale for the war in Iraq, a blot on his record. My father made a monumental difference 
Despite the pressures of his work, behind the scenes was a family life his son described as warm, joyous, and loving. Colin Powell was a great lion with a big heart. We will miss him terribly. Powell was 84 when he died, a husband, father, and grandfather. As the dignitaries left, the family gathered close to follow the four-star general on his final journey. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, Washington. Despite serving in several Republican administrations, Powell has supported Democratic presidential candidates every election since voting for President Obama in 2008. The U.S. State Department announced a $10 million reward Thursday for information on the hackers who forced a major U.S. fuel operator to shut down in May. The ransomware attack on Colonial Pipeline caused widespread disruptions, causing the fuel operator to temporarily shut down the 5,500-mile pipeline that carries 45 percent of the fuel used on the East Coast. Authorities are looking for information that leads to the identification or location of senior members of the Russian-speaking ransomware gang responsible for the attack. Coming up on First at Four, the latest jobs report is out. How the employment picture looks as companies prepare for the holiday hiring season. And you'll still need the warm clothes if you're headed out to any of our local high school football games tonight. I'll have the full details on the way.